in the Bible as well as uh, historical texts are references to giants or uh, beings called the Nephilim. In the Bible, they are called many things: um, the sons of Anak, the Anakim, uh, Raphaim. But uh, they are no, uh, most notably known as the Nephilim. The origins of the Nephilim beings were from the fallen angels who originally came down to teach man righteousness on Mount Hermon. Um, 200 of these angels um, came down and uh, as a result taking on the form of flesh, uh, just like Jesus did when he became man, they fell into temptation. Uh, unlike Jesus though, Jesus never fell into temptation. These uh, angels, um, a few of the leaders known as uh, Samyaza, um, Azazel, uh, made a pact together and uh, they decided that they would take upon wives of uh, the daughters of man that they saw fitting. And uh, as a result they created um, hybrid species or offspring known as the Nephilim. The primary reason for the Nephilim was to corrupt the bloodline of, uh, of God so that there could not be a Messiah to redeem mankind. Um, these Nephilim were also known as the seed of the serpent and they're listed several times in the Bible uh, as such. Uh, in Genesis we see a strange uh, passage. In Genesis 3.15 it says, And I will put enmity between thee and thy woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This uh, passage is referring to um, a bloodline of uh, God that will eventually come and uh, defeat the seed of the serpent, the Nephilim. Now we can trace back the historical records uh, in which it changes um, and the story of the Nephilim and the Giants is uh, modified and changed. Uh, during the early church fathers, uh, while monks were practicing celibacy, the uh, fathers of the church decided that they would change the doctrine and, or the teaching of the angels coming down and mating with man. They couldn't expect the monks to remain celibate while the story of angels uh, cohabitating with women um, and falling into sin. So what they did is they changed the doctrine and said that um, the reference of the sons of God coming into the daughters of man, the sons of God were actually the sons of Seth. And uh, this uh, completely changed everything uh, at that point in time. And when we look at uh, archaeological evidence, we look at the uh, structures uh, in Baalbek, the land of Bashan, um, the Golan Heights, as well as uh, uh, Mount Hermon, we see all of these uh, structures and tombs and uh, gigantic temples uh, that were built supposedly for kings uh, and I think for Nimrod as well in one of the uh, areas. In the uh, Baalbek area in particular, the one of the most impressive uh, sites, there are huge uh, trilithon stones uh, weighing some of them uh, over a thousand tons. Uh, some of them we're not even sure how much they weigh because they're so massive. Uh, they've been uh, cut, quarried, and moved uh, miles and miles away. And yet, um, we don't have a certain crane uh, machinery today that are as mobile uh, in as much to move them miles away. Uh, we have cranes now uh, recently that uh, can uh, move massive amounts but still the feat that it would take to move these uh, stones, these massive stones is uh, just uh, mind-boggling. And when you look into the Bible, the uh, reference, uh, one of the main references, Genesis 6-4, it says there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. And uh, we have other references throughout uh, Numbers um, and Deuteronomy as well as uh, in Samuel about uh, Goliath, the uh, Philistine, the giant uh, from Philistine. Now when we uh, look into uh, the history of the, uh, the Bible in ancient times, uh, one of the objections uh, about uh, the Bible and God is that, you know, God is so evil, he uh, wiped out uh, other people that were uh, around uh, the Israelites. Um, part of the history behind that is that these people were uh, evil, absolute evil um, in nature. They would uh, offer their children up as sacrifices, they would eat them, 
um, there was just the earth was filled with terror and uh, during that period of time um, what you have to understand is that if you believe that there is a God and uh, that there was a Messiah the reason why he wiped out a whole um, uh, cities or neighboring uh, peoples were that they were all evil in nature they were the Nephilim uh, they were meant to corrupt the earth and then in fact later on uh, God eventually uh, sends the uh, the flood to wipe out the corruption of the Nephilim mainly uh, it had got so bad that uh, only a few uh, remainder people of uh, Noah's family uh, were um, unblemished but uh, then after the flood you have another strange thing where then again we have um, the Nephilim uh, what is believed by uh, historians is that uh, after the global flood, the fallen angels or um, other angels eventually came and fell into sin again and basically uh, caused another set of uh, Nephilim. Uh, after, at this point in time, when David and uh, other people uh, eventually wipe out the Nephilim, um, Michael, uh, Raphael, the Archa and some other archangels are supposedly uh, sent by God to round up those fallen angels, specifically the ones uh, that came down on Mount Hermon, the 200 on there, and uh, basically um, bind them in the abyss. Um, so after that point in time, uh, you have a complete change of uh, what happens uh, following. But uh, in, in ancient history, uh, the Greeks and the Romans talk about um, the Nephilim and giants that existed. Josephus, who was a Roman Jewish historian, uh, talked about the history of uh, the Jewish people and eventually um, as well uh, recounting how the Nephilim came about and about at that period of time how they had uh, the massive bones still on display uh, for people to see because um, they had been uh, destroyed at that point in time. When we uh, look around history around the world, we see um, other uh, people who talk about the uh, Nephilim. Uh, for example, there were certain native tribes who talked about giant Nephilim uh, that would terrorize their people and carry off um, some of their uh, clan members uh, to eat them. Uh, as a result, what happened is they were fed up of the uh, Nephilim. They decided that they would um, throw wood into a cave that they inhabited and at that point in time they set it on fire and they never saw those uh, Nephilim again. Um, one of the common uh, things that people would do uh, holding up their hands to um, greet uh, one another is that um, at that point in time the natives would wave to uh, see if the hands of the person that they were approaching uh, had six fingers because the Nephilim had six fingers and by doing so, if they had six fingers, they would either run or get out of there. But um, certain customs like this uh, developed because of that. And uh, the particular giants that were um, around that area had red hair. They also had um, double sets of teeth, double rows of teeth. And so there were a number of ways in which they would determine um, whether they were Nephilim because they were frightened and scared of these, uh, this, uh, these, this race of beings. And uh, later on, in modern day, uh, when some um, farmers um, went to look for a certain type of fertilizers inside of the uh, cave, that very cave that um, one of the uh, natives wrote about, they found uh, remains of giant bones there uh, and with red hair. So it's been verified through science and through uh, history that these giants uh, did is exist. There is a prophecy through the um, Genesis 3.15 passage, uh, which is essentially that David was the one who defeated the seed of the serpent in the natural realm. And later on, Jesus uh, would be the one who would defeat the enemy in the spiritual realm. And um, it doesn't end there because later, um, what happens is after David uh, slays Goliath, he takes his, uh, the head of Goliath and brings it to his tent. Um, later, um, Jewish historians and uh, rabbinical study uh, talks of uh, David taking that skull and burying it on uh, a hill, the hill of Golgotha, uh, which was later uh, where Jesus was crucified. 
and what is believed is that Adam and perhaps uh, Goliath's skull was buried there and when Jesus was crucified the blood that um, that came off of uh, Jesus perhaps from his heel um, uh, dripped somewhere onto the ground and eventually made its way uh, onto Goliath's head and now there's some other speculation on why the hill was called Golgotha one of the other reasons is it is derived from Goliath uh, but one of the other reasons is that the side of the hill looks like a skull uh, and um, so it's all connected in terms of that they believe that perhaps it could be because it actually looks like a skull and if you actually look at um, one side of um, the hill of Golgotha uh, it looks like a skull till this day and um, so basically David destroyed the seed of the serpent in the natural realm natural physical realm and Jesus destroyed the enemy in the spiritual uh, aspect of it uh, and he completed everything and he died for everyone uh, so he defeated the demonic spirits which are the disembodied um, souls of the Nephilim and those spirits essentially uh, roam the earth uh, trying to possess human bodies because um, they no longer have bodies and they don't have salvation and then when you look at uh, extra biblical texts um, you see for example in the testament of Solomon how he uh, is given the ring of Sabaoth which is the uh, ring of the hosts or basically um, the ring of the captain of the host I believe which is Jesus um, and he takes this ring and he commands um, demons but first he calls forth a fallen angel one of uh, the angels um, that um, was either kicked out of heaven or sinned against uh, God and what happened is he uh, commands this uh, angel to call forth his demon um, uh, his lower demon um, advocates and so eventually these other demons come forth and Solomon uh, asks each demon you know what is your name and who is it that you are an offspring of and who is it that you are scared of and who is it that can defeat you and these demons go through um, who they were born of and uh, they talk about um, the particular angel that frustrates them or that they are scared of and uh, so it gives you a little bit more background on the Nephilim and, and the history all behind it uh, because the Bible doesn't talk too much about it but during the time of Jesus they knew of these type of things um, it was common knowledge it was passed down it was a common day thing so it wouldn't make sense for them to write it down um, archaeological digs and uh, finds that we've had um, are absolutely fascinating uh, for example uh, Maximinus uh, Thrax Caesar of Rome uh, who lived from 235 uh, to 238 AD his skeletal remains uh, were 8 feet and 6 inches. Around uh, the uh, Euphrates Valley, uh, we found a 15-foot skeleton, as well as many g uh, giant tombs uh, with other skeletal remains uh, have been uh, uncovered there. In uh, 1577, we found a 19-foot skeleton uh, under an overturned uh, oak tree in Canton and Cern. Uh, we also find in 1456 a 23-foot tall skeletal um, remain uh, around a river in Valence, France. Um, as well in France there was another 25 uh, foot skeletal remain uh, that we found in 1613 uh, near Castle uh, Chaumont in France. And uh, history uh, you know demonstrates that uh, we have uh, in the past had uh, giant beings living among us uh, in ancient times and it clearly uh, is uh, it demonstrates that. Um, so, you know, thanks for uh, watching. Uh, rate, subscribe, uh, like, and comment. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Okay, take care. God bless.